He doesn't fight crime or wear a cape He doesn't read minds or levitate But every time my world needs saving He's my superman Some folks don't believe in heroes Cause they haven't met my dad He loves his workshop and rock and roll. He's got a hot rod and a heart of gold. And you could say he's a man of few words, but he talks a lot within. And even though I'm a little taller, I still look up to him. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He taught me to drive and to fight and to dream When he looks in my eyes, I hope he can see That my dad's a hero to me Rust-ridden fender Doors full of dings Somehow he can fix About anything I didn't think he knew how to cry Till our dog died that year He doesn't always say I love you, But I can hear him loud and clear He built me a house in the arms of a tree He taught me to drive and to fight dream when he looks in my eyes i hope he can see that my dad's a hero to me Father's Day, dads. Have a great day. May you be spoiled. And may my boys at least send me a Father's Day card, eh? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on this very special day of the year. And I'm thinking about how we do send and give thanks to our dads for the very, very important part they play in our families and our lives and the community and in the lives of the church. We're blessed at Pilgrim with really fantastic dads who take their, their role as parents seriously, involved in their kid's life, involved in setting role models, involved in the ministry of the church. And I noticed during the week of Vacation Bible School how many dads step forward, decorations and teaching and sports and all the different aspects and elements of Vacation Bible School. So, so thank you so much. Also, one of the things I love about dads of today is so many of our dads love to cook and especially grill and have really terrific skills in, in uh, food preparation. Gotta love that, eh? And we're so blessed uh, by our fathers, thanking God for our fathers. And that is pretty neat, too, because the way the passage that we're going to look at is written. It's the leaders in the church who are thanking God for you 
dads, moms, kids, the people of the church, for those who are believers in Jesus Christ and are called together by him, special thanks are given for them. And I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you a great story in my mind about my Uncle Johnny, who was a dear man of God, who my brothers and I just loved deeply, was a lot of fun, had a soft heart toward God and, and loved to talk about things of God, loved to take us golfing, be out in nature. And we just celebrated life with Johnny. And we were blessed with great uncles, great aunts, and Johnny was really special to us. And I just remember um, a story from President Bob Overgaard from our denomination. And I talked to him just a few days ago to kind of update myself on this story. And Overgaard talked about how he would love to visit with Johnny because of Johnny's love for pastoral visits and, and talking about spiritual things. And Johnny is just a really special man that way. And he had a family of three girls, and he had lost a son, a twin, at birth. And Overgaard tells that story. But related to the story, he said, I would love to go and visit with Johnny, but I had to remember what season of the year it was, because if it was spring or fall, he should have been out planting or harvesting instead of visit with, visiting with me. But if I came over, he'd rather visit than farm. And of course, my Aunt Fern knew better, and would give Pastor Bob Overgaard, would give him uh, some stern looks and like, it's time for him to get out and get farming because things are waiting. It's not gonna, it's not gonna just, there's not gonna be a lot of chances to get get, get this farming done. So get out and farm. And, and Johnny would love just to visit, talk about scripture and theology and the things of God. So Overgaard tells this story, uh, I had been in Fergus Falls and spoke at Pastor Dave's graduation. And I just mentioned, hey, there's people here from Saskatchewan that's really cool. We served a church in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for a few years. And during that time, and I, I think it's still the case, during that time, the slogan on the license plates was, Saskatchewan, land of the living skies. Land of the living skies. And we saw that day by day, daily, in the wide open prairies and just the beautiful, immense sky of the prairies in Saskatchewan. And in Saskatoon, we got to see northern lights that just kind of came right down into our yard, and just the vivid colors of the, of the sky. And we were blessed by that. And then um, I was just thinking about that and how the skies could sometimes just open up with great glorious color. And Overgaard tells a story about meeting with my Uncle Johnny. And they were actually, after the death of the baby boy, they were actually out in what was our family's cemetery, a cemetery that the family had donated to the local church. And they had buried, would be my little cousin, died at birth. And Overgaard said we were talking weeping together, sharing scriptures, comforting each other. And he said it was like for Johnny as an older parent, Johnny was an older parent, and as an older parent, it was the death of a dream. He was burying a dream, but also burying a child. And he just remembers it vividly. And we were talking, and then all of a sudden, and what would happen in Saskatchewan is there'd be clouds to the west often, and the sun would go down behind the clouds, but then sometimes the clouds would lift and then the sky would just open up with glorious flaming orange and red colors. And that happened that evening as Overgaard and Uncle Johnny spoke. And it was like God was just speaking to Uncle Johnny that things would be good, that this baby was in God's hands. And that baby was chosen by God. Land of the living skies. And sometimes those skies speak an awesome message to us. Johnny was a great father. It reminds me of just the power and influence of a godly man. And fatherhood involves great sorrow, struggles, patience, but also great joys as we watch our children grow and mature. And then more than anything as they grow into living faith in Jesus Christ. So, Happy Father's Day. And yes, we give thanks for you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We'll read verses 13 through 17. 
Paul writes to the Christians in Thessalonica, to the church in Thessalonica. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel so that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Father, your word is truth. Sanctify us by your truth. Open your word to us today. Father, I pray that you be with us as fathers celebrating this day, as men of God, thanking you for our spiritual foundation, our spiritual heritage, a legacy of faith, hope, and love. Father, thanking you for our children, for our families, for our wives, for the people of the church. And here, this word, giving thanks for all of your children. What encouragement to us. I pray for our nation. I pray for our world. Special prayers to the people in Ukraine. And then, Father, I pray for us in this nation. It seems to be a lot of turmoil and obviously a financial uh, time of financial upheaval. Father, I pray that you would bring us calm, bring us peace. And Father, uh, thank you that you care about us in every part of our lives. Uh, today, as we celebrate the gift of fatherhood, tomorrow for us in a church, as we uh, recognize and remember Jordan, who died in a car accident, for his father and grandfather. Father, I pray you would be with them. Bless us. Be with us. Open your word to us, we pray. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts which are touched by your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Background to the book of Thessalon uh, Thessalonians. Uh, books written to the Christians in Thessalonica, to the church in Thessalonica. And typically the theme in both 1st first and 2nd Thessalonians is one of uh, the apocalypse, of what we call apocalyptic literature, end times literature, that was heavy in this book and the theme of this book. And what's happened is Paul has just been talking about, or Peter has just been talking about the works of Satan in relationship to the end times. And wickedness deceives those who are perishing. This is happening. And, and there will be a judgment against all this wickedness and, and the people of wickedness. But, and whenever there's a but, we go back and we go, well, what's the context? That's the context. But we ought always to thank God for you. And it's this sense of all of this wickedness, craziness is going on around us. We're so, we're so frustrated, so discouraged, so just puzzled by what's going on. But in the meantime, we thank God for the church, for believers, for you people. I was just thinking about that. How neat is it to know that the leaders of the church, here would have been Peter and Paul and others like them, giving thanks for the people of the church. So I was thinking about that locally. Here it is, our elders, maybe it's maybe it's Kurt Helfrich, maybe it's Isaac Petrick, maybe it's, and the list goes on, are giving thanks for you. I'm giving thanks for you because of what God is doing in your life and because how much you mean to me and to us and to your communities, we give thanks for you. Thanking God for you. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, Loved by the Lord, because, because God chose you as first fruits. It's very interesting because newer translations tend to lean away from phrases like first fruits. And this had read from the very beginning, chose you from the very be beginning or as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Now, there are two things I want to highlight here. One is we're chosen, we're called by God. And that's heavy in this in this passage that we are chosen by God, like adoptive children, chosen by God, adopted children. And then there's another, and this is really fun. This is a key verse in that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all emphasized in this passage. So God the Father, Jesus Lord, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So we ought always to thank God the Father for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord Jesus Christ, 
because God chose you as fruits, first fruits, to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. And so this heavy emphasis on giving thanks in the name of God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Each one is emphasized. Very few verses in Scripture that as clearly as this really highlight the Trinity, the three persons in the Trinity. Giving thanks for you. You are chosen and called by God to stand firm in the truth, to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. You are chosen and called. No accident, God has called you to be a member of his family. Look at Colossians 3, 12. Just a couple books before 1 Thessalonians, Colossians 3, 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, listen, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, and the gospel is a message of Jesus Christ that what we couldn't do for ourselves, God did for us by sending his Son into our world to be born, to live a perfect life, and to die for our sins and to be raised again. All this happens so that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is a powerful statement. To share in the glory of Jesus Christ, we are chosen and called. There's no accident. This is something God has done for us. Look at Ephesians 1, 4, just a couple of books before Colossians. Ephesians 1, 4. For he chose us in him. For the Father chose us in the Son before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his good pleasure. And I love that because that picture of adoption is like, this is me claiming you to be my child. I've chosen you. And scripture says, I've chosen you, you haven't chosen me. To be my son, to be my daughter. You've been chosen in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to his good pleasure. How powerful is that? Chosen and called. No accident. This is God's plan. And then 2 Timothy 1.9. 2 Timothy 1.9. Some great passages here. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in, in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time and has now been revealed through the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Really terrific passage, and it's a reminder to us of God's grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. God, What God gives to us is not because we deserve it, but because of Christ and what he's done, what he's paid, and so we receive this great gift. And so this, there's really a neat sense where basically the word is teaching us that we're special, but we're, <laughs> I love it. We're special, but we're not that special. We're special. God loves us and he sends his son to die for us and he calls us and claims us, but we are not so good that we earn it. We're sinful. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. We're given this gift. God has chosen us by his good pleasure. And then we're called to stand firm and fast. And I love this because uh, we're, we've been blessed to share a boat with uh, a family from the church. And uh, we had some, the boat started running rough just at the end of the summer, last summer. And so our friend, our friends, Dan and Stacey Lease, took a boat into a mechanic and the mechanic worked on it, found out that it needed a new carburetor, fixed up the carburetor. And I think the boat is about 10 miles an hour faster now than it was last year. And it's so much fun, right? And so full throttle now hits 50 miles an hour, which I think on a boat is pretty fast. It's almost like if it's rough at all in the water, it's pretty scary. And so when we go, okay, we're going to go full throttle for a while. Hold firm, hold fast, hang on, hang on, hold firm, hold fast. It's kind of a script, just like this scripture, right? So if you don't, you're going to fall backwards, not out of the boat, but you're going to fall backwards. 
And, and so we just always encourage folks, okay, we're going to go full throttle, hang on. We're going to go water skiing, hang on, hold firm, hold fast. And we're given this call in this scripture. He called us to the gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. It's a pretty neat passage, and it's pretty interesting because some translations talk about the traditions here. And I can just see Martin Luther squirming when he hears traditions because for him it was the word alone, not the word plus tradition or tradition plus the word, as he saw in the Catholic Church of his day, but the word alone is a final source for authority and doctrine in the church. The word is a final source. The word is a final authority. And that's not plus tradition, simply the word. But Peter would here recognize the importance of traditions and accept those and teach those as well. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. You're hearing these by word, you're hearing these by writing, and you're also seeing them in some of the traditions of the church. The book of the Bible that talks about standing firm and holding fast the most frequently is the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4, is an illustration. Uh, chapter 4, verse 14 is an illustration. Talks about the word of God being living and active. And then, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, just a reminder again of the great work of Christ. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we pro profess. Cling to the faith, hold firmly to the faith, hold fast to the faith to the truth, to the teachings of God's word. Hold firm, and we're encouraged to do that. Stand firm, stand fast. That you might share in the glory of Jesus Christ. And this is such an incredible thought that I can share in his glory. And it, I was thinking that in our culture, in our society, in our world, seeking glory is typically not a positive thing. We'll, we'll say, well, that he's a glory seeker. He, he's just seeking fame and attention for himself. But here we have this great picture of joining in the glory that Jesus Christ has gained for us. So listen, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. And then verse 14, he called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we receive when we experience the glory and we live in the glory of Jesus Christ? Well, I'm looking at this and I'm going, hmm, grace, eternal encouragement, good hope, strong hearts, Strength in every good deed and every good word. We are given these amazing gifts, God's riches at Christ's expense, as we share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his wonderful name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And dads, have a blessed, blessed day. Happy Father's Day.